chapter 5 to which our law is true our law of gravitation is true for a universe closed with two units two stars two cosmic concentrations but for the reality of infinity it is as false as newtons however it contains a more effective degree of approximation towards the reality of the great mystery since this law ours in the case of that unique that unique universe and to the extent that we have conceptualized it it is a content of real cosmic facts and this law is so true that due to its degree of accuracy we come to the knowledge of its own impossibility in the midst of the great infinite consortium and it is clear the incompatibility of interstellar times, which in itself engenders a very complicated geometry and without any relativity with the stars and worlds, results in that universal centrifuge cosmic push in all directions that must result in an immediate increase in the centripetal reaction for all the stars that form a dynamic system amongst themselves. If we wanted to calculate by means of our formula the mass of the sun previously determined and that of the earth by means of your own our own centripetal your own centripetal you would have in the end as a result a false number since the centripetal action between both masses m and lowercase m are greatly influenced by the interastral cosmics cosmic of the surrounding stars but the case still becomes a more difficult the case still becomes more difficult given that the cosmic relationships of the sun and the earth vary periodically we've accepted newton's gravity g equals km divided by r square because the coefficient k of universal gravitation was calculated within limits so narrow that it can be taken without noticeable error for all cases of the gravitational universe referred to the fields of a single center. Thus, within certain limits of, of distance, the difference between bodies is fulfilled in accordance with the aforementioned form g equals km divided by r squared. However, what does not, what does the, however, what does the distance limit mean? What is expressed with it? For the spirit of the philosopher, or better yet, the reasoning and conscious of the mathematician, the gravitational field is nothing more than a continuous expression of space in the functional measure of a variation of time. Thus, T means for us the most serious time, and where the kinetics is slower and the acceleration much faster. That is, time as a factor of rest that determines the conservation of the point located in a state above the cosmic center material, center of the field. The rhythm of the clock and gravity itself. For the local determination of the infinite points of said field already considered outside the material center, we will inevitably have some math problem and so on successively for infinity t to the third, t to the second. Between these points, of course, there is a certain cosmic gap by which that by which the static directions are geometrized Tried, yeah. establishing themselves from the narrowest time to the widest <clears throat> or within the sensible world from the effects and for better understanding let's say from the fastest clocks to the slowest ones the acceleration then would not be directed by T1 to T2 but from T1 to T0 and from T2 to T1. In the ideal assumption that T be the largest time of said field, a 
accepting that the time t on the maternal surface of the cosmic center of the field are equal, a hypothesis very fair and discrete. The projection of convex space on an ideal plane can then be made by means of certain level lines. This ideal plane does not express the idea of a Euclidean plane, no, on the contrary, in this plane, the projective metric varies in a perfectly relativistic proportion. See then the diagram below. We have accepted, or rather proposed, the convention of these level lines to make the study clearer and more objective, and above all, we've allowed ourselves this scheme because the part of truth sacrificed does not create any conceptual disorder. There we have then an elliptical field, that is, a geometric medium of constant positive curvature. If we develop our graph with our imagination in its true form and magnitude of space, we will understand that the statics generated by time determine an elliptical geometry in the vicinity of the material concentration contained by T1, T2, T3, T4, the arcs, the T, comma 1, T1, T, comma 2, T2, are the geometric or integrating lines of the field. Is the only this is the only thing that gives us the sensible measure of the geometric form of the spaces while the elliptical shades of the field in the vicinity of the largest celestial concentrations are conserved the relative forms also elliptical the relative forms of times will be fulfilled within said continuum as a necessary natural fact any line no longer the geodesics or statics of the acceleration for example T1, T2, would necessarily be a line contained in the elliptical plane. They will be linked by the same covariant equations, that is, T2, comma, equals being T divided by H. T and H is natural, previously deduced from T, as the most serious cosmic center in course of the polygonal elliptical. The fact is that each geometric shape has a specific coefficient of relativity and different shapes do not have any covariant equation that links them. The coefficient is the one that is specifically appropriate for the elliptical shape, never as Einstein intended to hyperbolic means. This elliptical shape, despite its apparent rigidity, fades imperceptibly as the field or space moves away from the cosmic center. This is why the covariant equation of the elliptical or gravitational medium has all its accuracy when, it's, when it is immediately applied to the material surfaces of the stars. Is that these points are not absolute of the field considered common to all the spaces corresponding to the cosmologically neighboring stars. This community, however, cannot be either, since it has already been seen that the concurrency of times will engender a new geometry incompatible with the gravitational geometry that is fulfilled on the surface of the celestial concentrations. On the surfaces of the celestial concentration. The fact is that the interastral spaces, which seem by far hyperbolic, but are means of constant negative curvature, have as their object the determination of the universal centrifuge. In a word, the dynamic harmony of the stars in the midst of an inexhaustible infinity of the heavens is engendered and sustained by the incompatibility of interastral or hyperbolic relativism with the gravitational elliptical. Thus, any body left to itself 
in the cosmic proximity of a star and where the elliptical medium still hasn't been transformed into a field of constant negative curvature in an, ad, in an inter astral space itself, properly said, would follow centripetal gravitation. Said body would follow centripetal gravitation. It would fall on the star. However, if on the contrary we had moved away far enough, our body mass would be left wandering through the heavens or hyperbolic spaces. There, well explained, is the distance limit, elliptical distance, and what is expressed with it.